I don't like to admit it, but I see conspiracies all the time. And I'll bet you probably do too. Not long ago, I, I took a train ride from Pittsburgh to Miami. And the train originated in the dark in downtown Pittsburgh and went through some tunnels and wound its way out of the city. And by the time the sun was rising, we were winding our way down the Yakagani uh, River Valley. It was just beautiful. Well, then we arrived in D.C. and I had to switch to another train in D.C. and that ride was going to be 27 hours on a train from D.C. to Miami. I was looking forward to that because I kind of knew the train was going to go around the Chesapeake and down the East Coast, down into Florida. Uh, I'd ridden the train a number of times, a uh, half dozen times, and every time I rode, I seemed to get a better seat. I didn't know they had so much leg room. You can lay the chairs almost completely flat. There's, there's leg rest in front of you. And then there's these really big windows. I mean, you can't imagine the window next to you. It's just almost as, and it's real low. It's as if you're just kind of looking straight outside. And they have power outlets and you put your laptop there. Well, the way they assign the seats on the Amtrak train is when you get on, they want to know where you're going, where your destination is. And they put you in the cars that are uh, your destination. Since I'm going all the way to the end, I'm getting in the car for people bound for Miami. And they just, they take out a piece of paper and they got a marker and they look at you. It's almost like they, they, they look you over to see who you are and then they, they write a number and they tell you you're in 17 or you're in 27 or you're in 24 or 13 or 16 or whatever. They just give you a number and you go in the car and, and, you, and it's hard to even to find them because they're not organized the way you might think. And you're looking around, you find your seat. Well, I get my seat and I go in there and I can't believe this. I, didn't, I can't believe they could even sell a seat like this and let alone expect that somebody would ride in it. But I sit down and right in front of me is a bulkhead. No room for my legs, no leg rest, no table, uh, no place to plug in my computer, and no window. The, the window that was supposed to be there was covered with plastic. They intentionally boarded it up. And I, I couldn't, I, I just panicked. I thought, no way. I can't imagine sitting here for 27 hours looking at this bulkhead. My first thought was conspiracy. This conductor knows this car, the train. He only works the one car. Like the back of his hand, he knows every seat and what it's like. He and his minions, they purposely gave me the crappiest seat in this train car. I know they did. Well, we have a tendency to put patterns to random events. It's just the way we make sense of life. Conspiracy theory is a term that originated uh, as a neutral descriptor of any claim of civil, criminal, or political conspiracy. It has since then, though, become mostly negative since the 1960s, where it's about joining in to a secret agreement to do an unlawful or wrongful act, or an act which becomes unlawful as a result of the secret agreement. For example, when people are accused of conspiring to overthrow the government, or the government is conspiring to take away, say, our personal rights. Some of the top of the mind or most notable ones we know is things like JFK's assassination and the 911 event and uh, Y2K or going to the moon. Uh, but they happen in everyday life, like the one I, I told you about my train ride. And, and they show up in sales transactions and situations where we begin to wonder if there isn't some kind of thoughtful plan that's working against us. Now, there are a lot of thoughts on conspiracy theory, but what you find is that uh, the biggest reason why conspiracies don't hold up are the two biggest factors that cause conspiracies to be uh, disproven. First of all is the requirement for a mastermind. Some incredibly uh, smart, intelligent person that can stay on top of all the details and make sure all the contingencies are, are covered and, and the plan just continues to unfold as it should. That's a very difficult thing to fill. Most people can't be that kind of mastermind. And the other, the other part is, is the requirement to have everybody on page and not sharing the secrets or uh, going public with the information or leaking or whatever it is. And the larger the conspiracy, the more this is the case in order to get everybody on the same page and maintaining the secrecy. Because one of the things about secrets that we know is that if you, if you want something to be shared virally or to be shared uh, casually, call it a secret. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's everywhere. But what if these two conditions could be met? What if there was somebody smart enough and driven enough to pull it off? And what if this person could unite the entities, the people, the agents involved in the plan to be on page 
and to reach the common goal. Would a conspiracy work? So you're thinking, what's all this got to do with Christmas? This brings us right to Christmas. And if you spend any time in and around the church in your life, you know that we have our own unique set of conspiracies, some of which are well-grounded and some of which are not. And when it comes to Christmas, we have our unique conspiracy that goes kind of like this. It seems to be getting more and more commercial every year. It seems like Santa is taking over for Jesus. And it's no longer Holy Night, Silent Night. It's more like e-coupons and Black Friday and BOGO. I mean, the bottom line is they, they might be true conspiracies, but they pale in light of the true conspiracy of Christmas that we're gonna look at this year. Because Christmas is about a conspiracy. It's just one of a much more different sort. All of heaven conspired weigh that idea. The deepest pockets, a mastermind orchestrating the efforts of fearless beings, all working together to follow a precise plan, so precise it was laid down thousands of years ahead of time, moving heaven and earth from one end to win us back.